previously on episode three. Tanya is giving to this institution far more than this institution is giving to her. Hey everyone, welcome to the Boosie Teaches podcast. As we say here at Boosie Teaches, in a galaxy of learners, Boosie Teaches lights the way. As our host Tanya Busico says to her students, come on in, relax, we'll be here a while. Let's get started. Welcome to episode four, Creating Space, Keeping the Door Open for Others. We taped our episode June 2021. I hope you enjoy. Hey everyone, I'm Tanya Busico. I teach writing, communication, and a few other skills to first year college students. Welcome to the Boosie Teaches podcast. So this first season is about mentors and influential people in my life that I'm certain others should get to know their stories too. While they are the most successful people I know, they are the most generous. So today's episode, we have none other than the Dr. Paula Johnson, principal at my alma mater, Lansdowne High School in Virginia Beach. Dr. Paula Johnson is the current principal of Lansdowne High School in Virginia Beach, the host alma mater. Go Eagles! Before becoming principal at Lansdowne, she was the principal at Bayside Middle School and assistant principal at Lansdowne High School. Before becoming an administrator, Dr. Johnson taught math at Lansdowne High School. She holds degrees from Virginia State University and Virginia Tech, with her final degree being a doctorate of education. So let me tell you how I met Dr. Johnson. Um, I think I was, I feel like I was around because one of my great friends was president in the ninth grade. I met Dr. Johnson formally in the 10th grade because she was our sponsor and she was Miss Johnson at the time and she taught math and I was like homecoming chair at the time. I just remember because I hadn't had at that point a lot of Black women teachers um, in Virginia Beach Public Schools. When I lived in Norfolk, we did. And so I just remember Miss Johnson just being a little stern, but like so loving and so um, just so, what's the word? So open to young people. And so we would tell her all our business. She would always know. She would never judge, um, would always give us advice. You know, our first little heartbreaks in school, she was there for about three years from 10th grade to 12th grade. I spent many after school days in her classroom in the math, in the math wing or the math hall. I remember even when we would stay after, we would eat all the time. We would watch Arthur. Sometimes we watch TV and just really, you know, make the best of what we could with Lansdowne. And we were the first full graduating class. And I can say that because of Ms. Johnson, we really had, not, number one, we were the best class. I don't care what anyone says, we had the yeah. best. So anyone listening, <laughs> 05 was the best class. You got like, it. We, we shut it down because after we left, a lot of yeah. people came. <laughs> but also just, I learned so much. I learned how to organize from Dr. Johnson. I learned when I later would have a theater company, what would it mean to set up a program? What, what does it mean to, to think beyond this moment? And so even as a high school senior, we had so much money, like we just had all this money that we eventually, we bought a, so what did Lansdowne, what did 05 buy at the school? The concession stand, the little small white concession stand on the, um, the home side. Yes. It's still there? It's still there. But yes, and so Dr. Johnson really, really taught me that just, just what it meant to be able to create plans. But also, you know, there were students who couldn't always pay because we had a senior package. And so very strategic about what do you put in the senior package? And I saw how she was able to maneuver in very strategic ways. Yeah, I mean, I, I got confidence. I spoke at graduation because of Dr. Johnson. Um, I was actually putting this on... Um, Facebook recently. I'm sure you remember this when we lost a classmate our senior year. We wanted to do a vigil. Our principal at the time would not let us do a vigil. And I I remember it it left me for a long time, but I remember that support or even me being able to open up graduation um, because there was no space for a vice president at the time. And so I, I'm just so grateful um, to have her on this episode. And it's also been great to see her journey from being a teacher to assistant principal to now principal. And just this very full circle moment to see that where I've met her, she is now principal. So I always like to give people their flowers beforehand. Let's get started. So my first question to you, Dr. Johnson is, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. And you know, I, I'm so proud of you. I was grinning the whole time and I, I hope I won't cry. Class of 2025 was the best. 
first of the last going out with a blast you remember that yes i remember that <laughs> but just the the fact that you you guys realized you were um history makers yeah and you were receptive and sometimes if you didn't really get it or didn't like it it was okay you definitely let me know <laughs> yes with that. Oh. And it was a lesson learned because i'm good i'm very good I i'm excited about you and all that you've done and and like i said the students i'm excited about the future of us here at uh, Lansdowne and coming out of COVID and, you know, recouping any of the lessons that were unlearned. I'm excited. So now let's think about you as a student. So I don't even know this information. So what kind of student, I mean, I could guess, but what kind of student were you either in secondary school, college, or both? So at the elementary level, I struggled. I am dyslexic at the time. I didn't know. And Yep, dyslexic. And what brought me alive was my geometry teacher in high school. So the elementary, um, middle, which is junior high school. I grew up in Brooklyn. So I went to PS46, junior high school, 265. Hmm. When I got to Norman Thomas, 111 East 33rd Street, I was able to really uh, come alive when it came to math. I love proofs and really figuring out the answers. And from that, I and you you said a couple times in our pre uh, discussion prior to um, hitting record that uh, you got your confidence and that's what I got I got my confidence in this class with this teacher and I've, I've joined the student government at the time I was the vice president of my class oh wow I wasn't president I was I chicken out because the young lady who um, was running for president was very popular so mm-hmm. I was like I'm not going to win against her so I'll, I'll go for the VP mm-hmm. and really did a great job and got to learn a lot and from there went on to Virginia State University and my I have a large family so a good number of my family members are here in the Tidewater area so I wanted to be away but not too far away so with Virginia State got very involved from the Big Brothers organization to um, becoming a Delta fall 86 I'm number nine out of ten and uh, we were to celebrate our 35th anniversary coming up soon so I got really involved in things but my heart was always in education so when I was at Virginia State University I became a tutor Mm -hmm. and I would go I was at the upper bound program so I would go to the different um, counties and tutor geometry and also on campus my love even though I didn't major in a major in elementary education and had a concentration of minor in math with that so but along the way I think let me go back a little bit so in high school I discovered and it really was right going into high school that I was a sudden dyslexic. And we had, um, mother had sent me, mother and father had sent me to different places to uh, figure out what was going on. And I just learned how to compensate for it. And, you know, I, I make comments now about it because sometimes if, depending on if you, you're very stressed or tired, it, it gets even worse. But with anything, you just, you know, you keep pushing on right. with it. Okay. Um, wow, I didn't know... I knew about Virginia State, but I didn't know about the, um, first of all, I don't know why I didn't know. I guess when you're a teenager, you're self-absorbed because I did not know that you were not from Virginia. Mm -hmm. When I was walking up to the studio and I was like, I know that Dr. Johnson went to, I believe, Virginia State. But then I was like, what high school did she go to? I don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No, my time is 111 East 33rd. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask, um, what made you move to Virginia? Well, again, I wanted to, you know, once I, oh, go back to Virginia State last year, we have, you know, the career center. And I even told my kids this at graduation. Career center, I would visit there often. And they were really looking for uh, teachers, diverse teachers. And so they asked me to make sure I was interviewing for where it came in. Because the goal was that they didn't want to lose folks. Like if you keep showing up for a facility and no one is there to interview, then they would stop. So I was interviewing left and right to the point where I was very comfortable with it. I got a couple of um, offers too, different wow. state. And I <laughs> I actually used one of my offers. I signed it. I didn't turn it in. So I was able to get a car before the, the day before I graduated. Oh, that's that. hard. Yeah, but I was employed. Virginia Beach had offered me a, a position as well, but I didn't have anything in hand at the time, right. but I was able to just really go and represent Virginia State University. I was even flown to Georgia. We went to Athens for a week and uh, did a series of interviews. I knew I was not going to Georgia, so those interviews are very simple, And uh, but it gave me a lot. I, I even had one um, gentleman to say, how can we get somebody like you down here? I <laughs> said, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I represented the university well with that, so I enjoyed that, and I did interviews for Virginia Beach and Norfolk. Okay. 
see the i'm loving these episodes because i'm just learning so much and the listeners are learning so much so let's talk a little bit about genius or purpose and the reason why i use the word genius is um when i had a play at my church my pastor said thank you for sharing your genius with us and i'm sure he didn't coin the phrase but i I mean coin the word but i was like oh i want to use that um so for you what would you say is your genius purpose or i add this to gifting because for some people it's all the same for others it is different No, I I think for me, it's purpose. That's what that comes to mind first. And it's purpose and instructional leadership, but also with the um, servant heart. One of the things that I tried to do, and you mentioned it, when you're leading others, whether it's teachers or students, you try to make sure that you lead as if you are leading yourself and that you treat yourself the same way. So yeah, I am stern. I do have expectations. At the end of the day, it's because I want what's best for whoever we're serving, whether it's our students, if it's our parents, it's community, it's our teachers, with that. And just let them know that we can do things with organization. We can do things that have creative ideas with that. So for me, it's a servant leadership piece. That's my purpose. Okay. How did you discover it? I can go all the way back to when I was at, um, actually, no, junior high. I did a talent show for the community. And I, I, I don't even know how I was allowed to do that because I was not much <laughs> older than the kids, but I put together a whole talent show and it started from there. And I was, the, well, I called myself the family tutor. So I would go to different states. I would go down south, as us northerners would say, come down south to babysit. So I would have school and play school with them. They would have to turn the TV off. We would have uh, writing, <laughs> uh, reading time. And all of them are, you know, the ones that I... Uh, babysat for a long period of time. I got a lawyer, a principal. Um, so they really, um, one is a university professor. So for me, it was just, you know, I love teaching others. Didn't really realize that. And by the time I got to high school, I definitely did know that I wanted to go in education. And I thought it was mainly elementary, but then the more I, while I was on campus and doing the tutoring and the math, I realized I wanted to be math. And my parents were like, that's nice. You're going to finish up and then you go. So I was able to get a certified as a math teacher with the elementary ed, which is actually not available anymore because I'm certified four through eight. And then I'm certified mathematics, which I can teach math um, in any level at the secondary level, any subject at secondary level. Right, right. Um, so let's talk a little bit because I believe that you shared what it looks like practically in your life. But let's talk a little bit about the shift. So you shifted from teaching to administration. What made you want to shift? Was there like a, an experience or something something that happened that made you decide, okay, this is a logical progression? No, it was a principal. A principal called me in. I was teaching at a middle school. He called me and he said, you need to go in administration. And I thought that they saw me as someone who you can rely on, dependable, and willing to do whatever's needed for children. So... I knew that he was coming from a sincere place and kind. And so he said, you need to go in administration. He talked to me about his own personal life and how it was important to move sooner than later. But, but I, I'm glad I didn't wait because I was able to be the sponsor class 2005 for one. Right. But um, there's so many different things I was able to explore. I've, I've been able to teach at all the levels, elementary, middle, and high. So for me, someone came and said to me, I think you need to be an administrator. So I went ahead and went into uh the program, Virginia Tech, the principal prep program, really enjoyed that. And then, but yeah, it was, it was a principal called me in and said, you need to do something. And I didn't go right away. I went to, I did ask him to help me get into um, a high school and I got the interview. Didn't get it at first because I think they felt, no, they, they, I don't think they told me it was a little too strong for where I was going. But then he said that he saw me at the conference on a Saturday. And there were no one answering, uh, asking questions. And I got up, I was on the tour full of folks. And I asked a question, because I always think about that presenter who really has planned for a uh, presentation and you know, excited and no one answers or asks questions. So I got up and he said, you willing to do that on a Saturday? Then I think I need you on my team. I really enjoyed my time at Cox High School. Was that, that was after you taught at Lansdowne, right? Or was that before you taught at Lansdowne? Before, before. Okay. Because I was, because you're back at Lansdowne and need, okay, okay, I got it now. Yeah, 32 for me. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. 33. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. And I love that point 
um, which is why it has been a joy to reach back to all of the mentors that I can get in contact with throughout my life because it takes people seeing something in you for you to things that you can't see within yourself and then especially reaching back to my mentors now that I'm 34 years old and it's like oh my gosh like I haven't seen people when I interviewed uh, Mr. Blackmore from Lansdowne I mean I hadn't seen him in 16 years and so to be able to now have these conversations as a fully grown adult it's just a, a I keep saying a full circle moment but it is it's, it's just the best feeling ever to be able to see like to be able to show that the that what y'all did worked that it works so thinking about that in the full circle moment what is it like so when I saw so I'm gonna tell you how I saw your announcement that you were principal so I um a tutor for avid the avid program which I'm actually going to interview my avid teacher coach Rob but I am a part of the Virginia B school system so I get the emails And then um, a couple months ago, I saw the announcement that Dr. Johnson was the principal at Lance. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So for you, what is it like to be principal at a place where you've pretty much been at every level from teacher to assistant principal to now being principal? It's kind of surreal. The first couple of days, because I'm going to be totally honest, my staff knows it's both staff. I'm in love with Bayside Middle School. I, I love the community. I love the students. I, I felt like my work was there and I really thought I was going to retire from it. Okay. But uh, when Dr. Askew, who's the former principal, retired, it was um, a bug was brought in my ear to think about applying for that position. Mm-hmm. And I did. I remember uh, Coach Rob calling me. I was in my office at Bayside Middle. And then he he's like, names out there about um, folks want you to come back to Lansdowne. And, and then he said, he was a fake sound. He said, don't tell me you're at work right now. Don't tell me, you know, other people need you too. So I just started laughing. So um, was able to hit the ground running, just felt like home. And even the staff would provide that, that saying, you know, welcome back, welcome home, welcome home. So it was really like coming home. For, I was gone for seven and a half years, so it's different. But I, I'm there from the origin. So that's kind of cool too, when you know that things, but this is what it used to be. Now it's this, right. but this is why that's hanging from the ceiling or that's why that thing is on the wall. So it's kind of cool to have that history with it. But once you get busy with students and work and deadlines, it's like routine. But just the fact that this, this never, it's ongoing, it never stops. And one of my um, uh, assistant principals that I work with, we were assistant principals together and she used this example and I thought it was great. The job of the administrator is like a treadmill. It just keeps going. What you just do is you just jump off and go, go home, go to sleep. Come back, jump back on, and you keep on going. Thinking about mentorship, as we briefly mentioned, so what role does mentorship, not just representation, what role do you believe that plays for students? For students, it's huge because they need to see, and I don't necessarily, um, I didn't think that it helped. It helped me, but then then reflecting on it, because your mentor doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's of the same hue or even gender. That person who sees something in you that you don't see in yourself, or you do see it, but you're not there yet as far as the confidence with it. But then there's to support you and to really help you with your ideas and also with thoughts of you know, what to do uh, if I fail. That's why you got to push that growth mindset because that's so huge. And then you learn from our mistakes and we grow stronger. The brain is that muscle. So we got to keep using it and learning from it. So the mentor piece is huge. And there's some that I think feel like your direct mentors, people that there you interact with. And there's those that you you see from afar and you monitor and you watch, you know, whether it's a podcast or a TED talk or a conference speaker and the stuff that they share, and you take bits of it, or their confirmation of what you're doing is you're on the right track. Right, right. And you mentioned a little bit about um, how mentorship has played in your life with your position at Lansdowne. What other roles has mentorship played in your life? So the, to go from the master's program from Virginia Tech to the doctoral program. I remember we had a professor and it was really tough, um, but I was able to be successful in the class. And I remember at the end, 
of my program, he made a comment to me. And I was talking about, I didn't think I was going to be able to apply for the doctor program. I wouldn't do well. And he was like, what's wrong with you? you know, he said, you would do perfectly well. And he walked away. And those little words were powerful to me because I had so much respect for him. He doesn't even know that what he said to me pushed me through. And I'm like, I can do this. Right. Was it easy? Absolutely not. Dyslexic? <laughs> yeah, it was not. And I poured every every paragraph was a struggle with that. So that 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 was a beauty for me. So it's just a matter of you get like you, you said it. You get those mentors, and then the, the, those are direct. They're assigned to you, or you ask them to. One of the things about the Virginia Tech program, the Principal Prep program. Hi, this is Tanya punching in August 2023. I just wanted to preface this section with saying that Dr. Johnson is talking about advice that her doctoral mentor from Virginia Tech gave her. And she's going to go right into talking about the advice. You go to this interview, you got you to sell yourself. You got to sell yourself. You got to talk about what you've done. You can say we and us, but really the interviews is about how you work together. Maybe you led something. Yes, it's, you know, us or um, we when it comes to teamwork you're sharing but if you did something special and you made that that creative point and it brought the team to a certain level you got to share that so just sometimes it's words that are spoken into your life whether they realize like, intentional I think they're always intentional I think what it is is that they, they realize the impact of it the beauty is is that with taping this podcast is that now people can have access to that you know I mean you've influenced thousands of students to hear your story particularly about dyslexia mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and just when you said every paragraph was a struggle someone's gonna identify with that i appreciate you telling all mm -hmm. your business and <laughs> yeah and, and the reason why i say that too because there's no i didn't get have someone write it, it was all me uh only thing i got at the end was that you know how you finish you have to have it formatted in a certain way right and you'll have a certain time to do it and in my um chair committee chair told me that there's a young lady that can do it for you in no time. So I reached out to her, she was able to do it. And she blessed my soul because she formatted it for me within a weekend, whereas I would probably would still be trying to format it right now. Right. Because, you know, it went from, I forgot how many pages, like 180 down to 125. Cause wow. you have to have a certain format. Right. So yeah, that was it. That was my, that was my, uh, you know, I always got to give Jesus a little shout out. So my support was the, the young lady who formatted my, uh, dissertation and then Jesus who carried me from the beginning to the end <laughs> yes yes I just yeah I appreciate that I just yeah um so let's talk a little bit about balance so you do a lot you are connected to a lot of people organizations as you said you you have a large family um how do you find balance for me, being busy in certain things and that servant leadership piece, that's my balance. I do like the, the binge watch certain um, shows whenever they come out. I'm behind on stuff. So yeah, like I, I'm almost finished binge watching uh, Empire. That's going to sound kind of sad, but it's the truth. <laughs> um, but um, stuff like that. I love the crown. And then, there's, you know, my organization, I get involved with Virginia State Alumni, Tidewater um, Alumni Chapter, uh, my sorority. Virginia Beach uh, chapter, Delta Sigma Theta, the uh, alumni, alumnus program with that. I'm trying to think. Um, definitely my church and being involved in that. I am over the um, scholarship committee. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little bit more involved before, prior to uh, working on my doctorate, but um, still connected. Been in that church for years. I got that to that church because a student asked me to come here saying, She's been long gone, but that's how I got to the church when I got here. So uh -huh. went to hear her sing and fell in love with the church and been there ever since. Okay. And what about self-care though? Do you ever go to the spa? Do you ever like go to the ocean front? Like what do you do? I need to start working on that. Sometimes, and I used to, I'm going to have to get back to it. I like going in the mornings. Um, it used to be, it was it goals at one point. It was one life. And you got the uh, Princess Anne. So I like the different elliptical machines with that. But yeah, I got to refocus on that. That's a goal for me. Yes, that that Princess Anne YMCA is really, yeah, that's a really nice YMCA. It is. It is. Um, 
Um, but there's actually a new wellness center. It's about a year old. Um, the rapper Pusha T, his wife has one in Norfolk. It's called Get Well Soon. It's woman owned, minority owned. And uh, yeah, it's like a, it's a vibe as people say. So it's nice. Okay. 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 So let's talk about joy. You do a lot, like I said before, but what brings you joy outside of your career? <laughs> I'm still connected. So what brings me joy, like I said, the scholarship co- committee and awarding student scholarships, those who have been in the church for so many years, remembering what they've done um, and to help them do, um, to increase their information on the scholarship. I, to me, it's just helping that individual get what they need, helping support others. That was bringing me joy. I have a goddaughter who's just phenomenal and she's done so many great things. She was the valedictorian for a class um, when she graduated from Spelman. So I was able to support that. Uh, she's a Marshall Scholar. So yes. she's in um, the UK. She's back now because of COVID, but just so proud of her. She's a, a writer. Um, yes. So there's things like that, just supporting that piece and just uplifting the young people with that and sometimes they don't want they don't want it in the beginning because it's like again you're going to meet my expectation with that but then they realize that you know you you get things done so they support them so there's some who will reach out and say hey i need to uh, meet up with you and sometimes it's for reference support advice things like that and i think it's great because i could have um we could have not talked we have we probably have missed talking for maybe six years yeah but they feel okay to come back and say hey i need to talk to you what do you think about this so I think that's what's great. But Jess, that was bring joy that when, when our young people succeed, especially when they don't think they can right. or they get focused on one thing, maybe it's a sport or maybe it's a, a musical thing. And then they, and I'm saying, go for it, go for it. But when you, when you get to a point where you realize it may not come to fruition, um, what's your next plan? And I'll be here for that support. So that was bringing joy when you see so many succeed. Um, and it's not because, like you said, some had charm life, you know, and some did not. It's just you, you, you're, you're um, happy for them regardless. Right. That's a victorious moment, whether they had a charm life or not. It's just the fact that they were able to finish because so many have not, right. whether they, you know, had everything they needed or had nothing, not even parents. Right. So for me, that's my joy. Right, right. Hi, Tanya punching in one more time, just to give context to this next part of the conversation. We had a little bit of audio distortion, but this is where Dr. Johnson is talking about the level of bluntness that I have always had. And if you know me, then you know. Tanya, because you, what I like about you, um, just so honest and honest and, and not afraid to, well, with everyone, it wasn't everyone, but with me, just be honest with me. And I like the feedback, I, I needed it because you don't know everything. And when you have a student sharing with you in that manner, um, like that wasn't right. So for me, I saw that too, that honesty and that what you saw in others. So you're gonna get that and you don't know how many lives you touched, whether they were your age or older. Um, and some of the things you do, so you know that you know, to be so excited about your graduating class is huge, and they're going to remember that. I, I have a, a student that I taught at Locksburg, who's, who's principal now, and I completely forgot that she said we. I had come because she was my officers. I was the SCA sponsor there, the first one at Locksburg Middle, there for six years, and my first they graduated, and I went to their graduations and gave them a card. Completely forgot that she reminded me of that. Wow. So yeah, there's so many things you do. You keep, you forget because you know what, when it's sincere, your, yeah. your motives are sincere. Yeah. You don't keep it in your little file that says, this is the good thing I did today. Right. No. Right. right. And, and I keep that. Like, I am so, I'm still honest. I'm still Tanya. Like the core, I, you know, I've achieved great things, but the core of who I am is still absolutely the same to call a spade a spade. Yeah. Um, but looking ahead, as we begin to conclude this episode, what advice would you give someone, especially someone who thinks that they may be interested in education, um, whether a teacher, administrator, what would you say to that person who's not sure of what's next? Yeah, so first go into it um, as far as uh, education that you, you're going into it, definitely not for money with that, but going into it with the understanding that I want to serve these young, young people. 
and finding a way to reach them and finding that that content that you like too because you can love the students but not, don't like the content and it's going to come out kids can read it with that go in and try it if you already have a degree try substituting for a while first then go look into a career switcher program or send your transcript to the state and see what you can teach and get a provisional with that um, if you are looking into administration again what's the purpose what's the focus what's the goal um, sometimes folks make it look easy and you think you can go and do it, but you give up a lot of your life, get a lot of your time because I'm never not the principal of Lansdowne High School. You know, whether it's Sunday right. at right. five o'clock or if it's uh, Monday at uh, 12 a.m., you're still the principal, but you also represent so many and you have to stay focused. So just trying some things out, internships are great, go and shadow some folks and have an idea of what's needed And then find someone that's doing something that you like, find out how they got there, have a conversation, do interviews with folks. Thank you. That was really great advice. Yeah, that was especially the shadowing because people don't, you know, folks don't really want to do stuff for free. And I know that there's a larger conversation with internship and privilege, but I think even shadowing a couple of hours and having those informational interviews will definitely allow you to see um, a different perspective. So this is the fun part. As we conclude the episode, this is the fun part. So in hip hop, because I love hip hop. I don't know if you knew that, but I just like really love hip hop. But (laughs) she's nodding her head for the listeners. So in hip hop, people always ask, it's almost like a calling card. Like who's your top five dead or alive rappers? Before I ask my question, I always ask, do you listen to hip hop? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Brooklyn. Yeah, and I'm not even sure if it falls in in this category, but you know, Sugar Hill Gang, Right. And Mary J over with that. But yes, my top number one. Of course, you have Jay-Z and then Eric B. and Rakim. That okay. was one. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Yes. Um. So my my question, though, for you, and I try to tailor questions to people's uh, profession and careers. So who would you say are your top five educators of all time? Um, and they can be anyone. Well, you know. So for me, not necessarily that he taught, but he did teach. Because when you're a preacher, you teach all the time as Martin Luther King. Everyone can be great because everyone can serve. That to me is powerful. His daughter, Bernice, is another. She's so impressive. Continue the great work that her dad started with that. Then there's personal ones that got me. Uh, Don, Donald Harvey, who was my principal at Locksburg Middle School, the one who called me and said, you need to do something. And then there's a history folks, you know, like Carter G. Woodson, even though wasn't there, but just knowing what his work, that kind of piece. So I find, you know, some are dead, some are alive, uh, some, uh, you know, didn't, don't know me, some do. Yeah. Okay. Carter G. Woodson is actually on my list. For me, I have Mary McLeod Bethune, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I have Carter G. Woodson on my audio book list. Patricia Kill Collins who does a lot with Black literacy. Ida B. Wells. You got divorce. Oh, I didn't put him up there. Absolutely. And then I would also add, in that era, Zora Neale Hurston. Just the beauty of the everyday person, the beauty of dialect when other people and having that space to say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write like my people talk. Okay. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have any party words before we close out this episode? No, I just think, uh, well, I'm, I'm saying no, then I keep on talking, right? So, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, I'm gonna talk. I'm talking to those teachers out there who, who uh, like the kids say, oh, you're mean, but then you got to constantly remind them it's meeting. I have expectations for you. I want to hold you up. I'm going to still love you. You're going to make it. And not everyone's going to be uh, sweet and sugar, sugary for you. There are going to be some that's going to have to hold you to, to wherever it is so that you can meet that expectation. But not to a point where it's like, oh, my God, I will never want to talk to her again. Right. So I do appreciate the honesty. I've always done. I've always appreciated that. And, and um, really respect you. I'm so proud of you. Thank so you. proud of uh, your future. Yeah. Wow. So good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all we have for today. 